Hero Academia, chapter number 200. I was very wrong in thinking that we would get the um, character popularity poll in chapter 200, as we got a simple shot of some of the most popular characters, at least as far as I know. Although Froppy's not there, so who, who knows the credibility of all that. But this one is titled Resourceful General. We pick up with the battle between the forces of Yayorozu and of Kendo. Um, we have mushrooms being sprouted not only on the terrain, but uh, on our hero's body parts as well. And this is the product of Hinoko Komori, whose quirk is Mushroom. She is able to spread out spores that create a j just mushrooms wherever they may be. Um, this is rather problematic for our heroes because it kind of limits their movement and creates a way of Kororo being able to, you know, hide within the darker mushrooms and so on and so forth she uses this power kind of spammingly mostly because in two to three hours they all kind of just plop right off and you know fade away um, but it takes good amount of humidity in order to um, you know keep get them to grow so that's a little bit of a condition for her ability it's a very interesting way of doing things, but, you know, it, it was very apparent that this was probably her power once you find out her quirk is Mushroom. You know, there's only so many things a quirk called Mushroom could actually do. And her, we come to find out that her name is uh, Shimage. So that, that's a nice little thing, kind of like a, uh, you know, he kind of thinks of it like a magical power kind of thing. Meanwhile, Kuroiro, also here a name known as Vanta Black, has hidden himself within the darker mushrooms, and they are setting up for their next surprise attack. We come to find out that Kendo pretty much planned for everything, Dark Shadow being sent out as a scout, you know, Kuroiro using this in order to kind of go in and take control of him, and even the fact that they use the light of naval laser in order to, you know, kind of, you know, combat him, his use of the shadows. Um, but, you know, the fact that Kenda was able to come on upon all this knowledge just from knowing her opponent, it shows the depth of her planning, you know? It's always good to see a character who just has such a wealth of knowledge and strategy, you know, and even Momo kind of comments on the fact that it's just like, this is actually a fairly good way of disrupt disrupting us in general. And as she tries to get her team to regroup, Momo is suddenly separated from everyone because of a blast of a solid wall of onomatopoeia, giant Japanese letters. And this is the quirk of Manga Hukadashi, whose quirk is comic. Hero name, Comic Man. He can materialize onomatopoeias into reality. Now, I kind of figured this might possibly be his quirk, but it was very hard to pin it down with a quirk just called Comic. And it's just like, what could possibly be the quirk of a person named Comic? Materializing letters is like the closest thing, because I feel that's what um, Levy's ability, her solid script in the manga Fairy Tale, her ability was to materialize certain letters, you know, right in the air. You know, she'd write iron, it'd be solid iron, she'd write fire, it'd be fire, stuff like that. So I wonder if it would be possible for Manga Fukadashi to be able to do things of that nature, or it would have to simply be actual kind of solid letters no matter what. Because we see him say the words um, Jime Jime, which stands for humid or muggy, and it emits this kind of heat wave 
that it causes the mushrooms to sprout even more rapidly and exponentially. So it might be that he has a great deal of power. Because just think about it, the ability to materialize any kind of term he might say. You know, he, you know, being able to say fire and he shoots out fire and stuff of that nature. Although it appears more that, you know, it only goes, travels a certain distance from him. So who knows of his the range of his abilities. And I even love the comment that, um... Uh, Sugar Man says that, um, you know, how would that how those Japanese onomatopoeias translate into foreign countries? Which is one of the first things I thought of when I saw it come out in Japanese letters. I'm just like, huh, that's going to be a little weird when it goes over to different markets. But if you're watching this series in period, you should know that it's a Japanese series. So, all depends. But with the cutoff of Yagyarozu, Kendo sees this as a cutoff of the brain, the, you know, their strategic power. And, you know, with her, she Kendo can just go in on Yagyarozu with raw power and they'd be broken up easily. And we see the full extent of Kendo's ability. It's not just the fact that she can grow her hands larger, it's the fact that the larger her hands are, the more powerful power is within them so you know it gives her super strength on top of that which makes sense you know if she wasn't if it didn't give her a surge of power and energy i don't think she'd be able to lift up her fists in general you know and all momo can do is create these you know tungsten walls in order to try to block them but kendo's power is just destroying these walls in general and Tetsu, 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 I love saying that name, it's just like, yes, Kendo's got her you know, uh, Momo on the ropes, she is done for. But, always the fanboy that he is, Todoroki interjects, saying that cutting off Momo was not the best idea. If she thinks that um, Momo needs the support of the team in order to actually, you know, make it through, then she has misjudged Yagyarozu severely. And as Yagyarozu holds off Kendo's attacks, you know, she thinks about what Kendo had said, saying that, you know, you know, you, Momo is so experienced, so developed, she has a wealth of knowledge, she's the best out there. Momo still kind of down on herself here and there, thinks it's just like, no, Kendo, you got it all wrong. It's just like, I'm still very naive. I'm still very foolish in the way I approach things. You know, to say that I am so much better than you, it's just like, I can't show you a pathetic side to myself. I have to at least try to live up to the expectations that you're placing upon me, which I think that is kind of the best way to go about things. You know, it, it's a very sweet way of looking at things. And as the chapter ends, um, Momo, you know, just uses all of her power to create a cannon ready to fire at Point Blank. Um, you know, because Momo took some time, you know, blocking this attack in order to create this large of an object. And so our chapter ends with, you know, Momo getting ready to fire upon Kendo. So, you know, this was a great chapter. You know, a lot of interesting things, a lot of fun, a lot of excitement. You know, getting to see the power of Class 1B is just exciting and just a fun time all around. You know, I know it's not the most devastating heart pounding excitement but it's just like just seeing the wealth of experience that these other characters have gained up until this point you know we didn't have to sit through them being not as good we're at already a point where they're you know pretty good now you know they've you know gone through enough experiences that they can hold their own with class 1a you know i still expect class 1a to come out on top you know in a lot of places but at the same time, I'm glad that they're giving each other a, 
you know, or run for their money, you know. And Kendo is just one of the best characters out of Class 1B, you know. Not to say that none of the others are good, it's just that we've had so much time to get to know Kendo that it's just very interesting seeing two characters who are very fairly beloved you know they're fa seen as fairly good characters you know it's good to see them just you know go at it have a friendly rivalry and competition you know we're setting up a lot of more of the other characters and hopefully they will come more into play in the future now that the power set has been established hopefully even the anime will take advantage of this and have class 1b involved in even more filler stuff it'd be nice to even just see that because it just does a lot more for these characters in terms of exposure you know you give them this opportunity and they can grow even more as characters but you know tell me your thoughts in the comment section below uh, whose power do you think is the best up into this point in terms of class 1b do you think they can uh, hold a candle to any of the members of class 1a and it's like who are you hoping wins in this little excursion but, you know, tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. Leave me a like if you like what I had to say or a dislike if you didn't. And subscribe for more chapter reviews of My Hero Academia. Thanks for joining us.